Okay, we are now live and being recorded. Over to you, Chairman. Thank you, Wendy. Good morning and welcome to East Devon District Council's Virtual Planning Committee on 22nd of July 2020. I am your Chairman, Councillor Eileen Rag. I would also like to welcome anyone who's watching this meeting via the live streaming. All participants here today are taking part remotely and as well as being live streamed, the meeting is being recorded. So please bear this in mind throughout and may I remind you to be careful with your language as I will be. May I also remind members that the code of conduct applies throughout this meeting. We also reserve the right to remove and disconnect any participant who is disrupting the meeting by whatever means, and I'm sure that won't happen. At this planning meeting, uh, it is dependent on internet connection and a power supply. In the event of a break in the internet connection or a power cut, please bear with us as we try to reconnect. After 15 minutes, if we are not able to reconnect, we will consider the meeting adjourned and reconvene at a later date. Please check the committee page on our website for details. Please make sure all phones are turned off or on silent and make sure all microphones are muted when you're not speaking to avoid any background noise levels. Keep points short and do not repeat points that have already been made and do not interrupt like just a minute. If you wish to comment, please raise your electronic blue hand and wait to be called. All councillors have been sent the agenda for today's meeting. Any members of the public who want to view the agenda can do so by visiting our website, www.eastdevon.gov.uk. We will now start the meeting by doing a roll call of committee members here present. Can you please now unmute your microphone and when you hear your name, please confirm by saying present. When you've confirmed you are present, please mute your microphone again. Sarah, can you read out the list, please? Thank you. Councillor Kim Bloxham. Present. Councillor Colin Brown. Present. Councillor Sarah Chamberlain. Present. Councillor Andrew Coleman. Apologies from Councillor Coleman. Thank you. Councillor Ollie Davy. Present. Councillor Brewster Sarum. Pre present. Councillor Steve Gazard. Present. Councillor Mike Howe. Present. <coughs> Councillor David Key. Present, Miss. Councillor Kathy <laughs> McLaughlin. Present. Councillor Jeff Pook. Present. Councillor Jeff Pratt. Present. Councillor Philip Skinner. Present. Councillor Joe Whibley. Present. Councillor Tony Woodward. Present. Councillor Eileen Ragg. Present. Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that the meeting is quiet. Thank you. Uh, right, the running order for today's meeting and speakers list can be viewed under agenda item one on pages five and six. Uh, agenda item two, minutes of the previous meeting on page seven to 13. If anyone has a comment on the last set of minutes held on 15th of July, 2020, please do so by raising your blue hand. If I have no blue hands raised, I will take this as an indication that you all agree the minutes of the previous meeting. Mm. See, no blue hands raised. So do we approve the minutes? Uh, well, we do approve the minutes of the um, previous meeting on the 15th. Um, Wendy, can you confirm apologies, please? 
Yes, just one apology for this morning. For today, it is Andrew Coleman, Councillor Andrew Coleman. Thank you. Uh, now there'll be a roll call for any declarations of interest. Uh, Wendy, can you do that, please? We do have a blue hand. Oh, no, gone. Sorry. Right. I'll yes, up. we do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Councillor Pook. Yeah, just trying to confuse you. Um, it's the Beer Community Land Trust application yeah. on number nine. Well, it's not number nine on the agenda at the moment. I've got a personal pecuniary interest in that I'm chair of Beer Community Land Trust and I've made them a, a no interest um, startup loan to get things moving. Um, so for this item, I'll be stepping out of the meeting or being put in the box, whatever it is. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, any, yeah, are you, are you calling the roll, Wendy? I, w I will do. Um, I've just noticed that Councillor Wibley has a hand up. I'm just wondering if he was declaring an interest or whether yeah. it was on the mint. You are okay, so I'll um, I'll do the roll call in alphabetical order. So I'll get to you shortly, Councillor Wibley. <coughs> so, starting with Councillor Bloxham. No declarations of interest, but I would like to highlight that I've received two emails of representation regarding an Axminster and an Exmouth planning application, and I believe other members of the committee have also received the same emails. Thank you. What application numbers do they refer to? Um, 200661 BAR and 191753M4. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor, Br Councillor Brown. Um, received the same two emails and also the ward member for application 20 stroke 0425. Thank you. Councillor Chamberlain. No declarations of interest. Councillor Davy. I've received these same two letters and I also received a phone call from the applicant for 1975, uh, 1753 MFUL um, some months ago um, in my capacity as a town councillor and I'm also town councillor for that ward. Thank you. Councillor Desarin. Uh, like everyone else, I've been lobbied by, by email on 200661, and I've also been lobbied by email on 191753, which everyone else has done. Um, I, I am one of the ward members for 200324, the, the little one, and also, of course, also represent the interests of the town as a town councillor. So that's that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> councillor Gazard. Exmouth Town Councillor. Um, interested in obviously number 11 and number 12. Thank you. Councillor Howe. Same to lobbying emails um, as others have declared. Thank you. Councillor Key. Yes, same to emails and ward member for 200425. Councillor McLaughlin. Same two emails, um, nothing else. Thank you. Councillor Pook, you've declared yours. Have you got anything else to declare? Yes, I, and the same two emails. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Pratt. <coughs> Councillor Pratt, are you there? I'll move on. Councillor Skinner. Uh, I, I like to just uh, claim the um, two previous emails. Um, other than that, uh, to my knowledge, I have none, but surely if something comes up, I will let you know in due course. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Whibley. Um, in receive the same two emails, um, Exmouth Town Ward Councillor as well. And in respect to 191753, um, I have played music um, in, in the pub on numerous occasions. Um, 
Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Councillor Woodward. Yeah, the same two emails. That's all. Thank you. Councillor Rack. Same two emails and ward member for 191753 Sam's Fun House, Exton Town Ward. Thank you. And then we're going back to Councillor Pratt. Do you have any declarations? <clears throat> I'm afraid you're on mute, Councillor Pratt. If you could unmute, we can hear your declarations. Sorry, Chair. Uh, no declarations other than the two emails. Thank you. And that's the, um, that's the end of the declarations. Thank you, Wendy. Um, item five, matters of urgency. There are no matters of urgency, but there is something that I did promise um, one uh, local resident that I would raise. I did send an email around last week, and I'm sure that most councillors respond when applications um, are all come up in their ward and they're asked for observations. So it's just a remind, it's a gentle reminder um, for um, councillors to respond to any applications that come in their ward if they have observations on them. This saves a problem later on when, um, you know, the, there might be something that arises from the application that could have been addressed far earlier. Thank you. Um, item six, confidential. There are no confidential items. Um, so we move on to the first application, please, which is 20.0818 for uh, Fawnsmore Farm, Lime Road, Axminster. And um, we have um, the applicant agent. Mr. Simon Williams, is Mr. Williams in the waiting room, please? No, he's in the meeting. He's in the meeting. Welcome to the meeting, Mr. Williams. Um, can you acknowledge that you can hear me, please? Yes, yes Chair, I can hear you, thank you. Thank you, um, thank you for coming. Um, now, first, before you speak, and you'll have three minutes, yeah. And you'll be told 30 minutes, 30 seconds before the three minutes are up, um, that you have 30 seconds to go. Um, but over to Mr. Rose to present the application, please. Thank you, Chairman. Morning, everybody. Let me just, hopefully you can see uh, my screen with the item. <laughs> so this application at Fawnsmore Farm uh, is for the conversion of redundant agricultural building to a dwelling. <clears throat> it's before you because the uh, officer recommendation is contrary to the view of the ward me of member. Uh, it's a, a, a range of buildings to the north of the farmhouse, so around where my uh, cursor is. Uh, and at the moment, as you'll see from the plans, there's a single uh, sort of C-shaped single story buildings, uh, previous agricultural buildings. Uh, if you could also note on the plan in front of you, this 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 red line, uh, that is the route of a new access that was granted under a separate plan permission. Uh, so that's how the proposed dwelling would have access to the main Lime Road and then further on uh, into Axminster. The site's in the uh, open countryside. Um, and if I just talk you through, so these are the floor plans at the moment. So it relates to this C-shaped building here. Um, and these are the proposed plans. So this is the C shape at the moment. So hopefully you can see from these plans that there's a, an extra floor added over this part of the building, two story extension to here where my cursor is, and then a canopy infill to this part of the, uh, or canopy over this sort of courtyard here. So these are elevations at the moment. So you can see there's two storey adjoining and then we go down to the single storey uh, buildings that form part of the application. And then these are the proposed. So you can see we go from uh, single storey to two storey on uh, part of the building. And then the uh, remainder of the single storey uh, element gets refurbished. And there's a two storey extension on the rear, which be clearer when I show the, the photos. Uh, so 
these these are the photos of the existing so you can see traditional agricultural buildings so this would be refurbished canopy would be put in here to cover this sort of courtyard area uh, so all of this would be refurbished and there you can see the adjoining uh, buildings so the application site is here so we'd have an extra floor above that part of the building and then an extra floor running around so two-story so extra floor above here and then when we get to the back we would have two stories coming along here and a two-story extension so if you imagine this two-story element projecting out over this part and then a two-story extension on the rear here so that's the extent of the proposal so there's policy support in the local plan for the reuse of rural buildings outside of settlements and that's policy d8 um, and uh, there's a number of criteria that need to be met with that policy. Uh, one of them is that the building needs to be structurally sound and capable of conversion. Uh, and yes, the, there's, uh, uh, you can or you probably see from the photos, the building is structurally sound and there's a survey submitted with the application that, that demonstrates that as well. So the proposal meets that criteria. There's another criteria that uh, say, states that the extent of alteration extension, uh, it should, you know, the building should be capable of conversion without substantial extension, alteration or reconstruction. Um, but and the reason for that is to keep the rural character of buildings and to keep their scale. And as the policy is about conversion of buildings rather than a new build or extension. In this case, given the two story elements that's proposed here, um, we've got quite a, a sizable increase in the floor space, not quite double, but, um, but a quite a sizable um, increase in floor space uh, and a, therefore a significant alteration to the appearance of the building. So changing from these single story barns to uh, part two story. Um, and whilst the materials are traditional, uh, that alteration changes what was a functional agricultural building into more of a residential character. Uh, and it's considered that they, those extensions are substantial and therefore that fails to meet that criteria to D8 where it says that we shouldn't be allowing substantial extensions and alterations. The third criteria to the policy is uh, about the bulk and design of the building being in keeping. And I just mentioned that uh, the extensions here uh, would add to the bulk of that building so, uh, and change the agricultural form. So it's, it's not considered that the proposal complies with that criteria. In terms of the further criteria, there's one on traffic, where there be ample parking and good access to the site. So the proposal certainly complies with that criteria. Um, yeah, the third, another criteria is it shouldn't undermine the agricultural enterprise. The proposal won't do that. And the final criteria is related to accessibility. Uh, whilst the site is outside of a built up area boundary, it is within walking distance of Axminster. That new access uh, gives good pedestrian links down the line road uh, on footpaths that are lit. So from, from a sustainability location point of view, the application is considered to comply with that part of the policy. So. The main issue here that hopefully you've seen from the report is the whether the extent of the alterations proposed are acceptable, bearing in mind the policy requirement not to allow substantial extension and alteration. And uh, the officer's report details that we consider that that, that two storey element in particular and the extension to the two storey elements uh, means that the agricultural character of those buildings would be lost, no longer a, a straight conversion of a building. Uh, and therefore there's, there's harm to that complex um, contrary to policy D8. So for that reason, the application is recommended for refusal. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, can I invite you now to speak, Mr. Williams? Yeah. <clears throat> Am I unmuted? Yes. Right, fine. Thank you, Chair. Um, good morning, committee. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, the officer's report, uh, and you've just heard, confirms that the conversion of the building is acceptable in principle. We consider that the pro proposal does accord with policy D8 by being sympathetic to the site's character and its setting. The buildings are structurally sound and capable of conversion, and the scale we consider is in keeping with the context. The only issue is the height of part of the converted building, and there's nothing actually in D8 that says an upper element is unacceptable in principle. Importantly, the design is not a standard domestic dwelling. The upper level has variations in roof form and materials that does respect the site's character as the outbuildings are joined to the farmhouse, which is also two-storey with single-storey elements. 
and therefore the proposal is more in keeping uh, than retaining the buildings a single story only. Indeed, there are much larger two-story farm buildings just on the other side of the yard uh, that have not been shown. Materials proposed include stone, lime render, cedar cladding, slate, and oak window frames, all providing diversity and visual interest. This results in an agricultural rural theme to the design and is a significant improvement on the existing buildings that you can see. It's important to note <clears throat> that part of the ground floor, the music room as shown on the plans, is actually already part of the farmhouse and this accounts for 28 square meters. So this is not additional space or footprint being created. The existing footprint is reported as being 150 square meters, that's the ground floor, uh, and the expansion of that is only 26 square meters, which is only 17% of the footprint. The rest is external porch, as you've seen. The upper story is only across part of the building and adds just 90 square meters, which is required to provide a realistic and viable level of accommodation. We suggest, therefore, that the scale is not as great as implied in the, in the committee report. Of course, the proposed proposal will result in some change to the buildings, but this doesn't cause harm to their character or their setting in our view. Indeed, it will be an improvement as the building will be restored with a sympathetic design that is compatible with a wider rural setting. The report refers to some sections of the NPPF that supports the principle of this scheme, but not all. Other sections endorse the effective use of land, the use of underutilized buildings as we have here and previously developed sites. The officer's report rightly emphasizes no evidence of any impact on the countryside or the landscape. 30 second warning, Chairman. The structural report confirms the buildings are sound and capable of conversion, and it's supported by the Town Council and there are no other objections. Leaving the buildings in their present state will just result in deterioration and do nothing for the farmhouse or the rural setting. Finally, I appreciate the committee has to balance these issues and make a judgment. I simply ask the question, what demonstrable or actual harm will be caused to planning, the environment or the countryside if this application is approved? In my professional judgment, the answer is none. And so I ask the committee to approve the application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Um, now we have um, Councillor Moulding. Councillor Moulding. Yes, thank you, Chairman, very much indeed. Um, and uh, this is an interesting application and one that I feel should be supported. For many, many years, I have always been saying that we should try to use redundant farm buildings. Otherwise, there is no use for them. They become uh, a blot and, um, and by converting them, it becomes a home for somebody and as everybody knows we are trying to ensure that people have homes this building is very capable of conversion it's very sound and in my view uh, the alterations as proposed are sympathetic to the rural setting it's very much on the same footprint as the existing uh, buildings and to add a, an additional story over just part of this building in my view it's just merely an extension of the existing roof line so the roof line would extend over the existing uh, stonework and create what then will be an acceptable dwelling just as a ground floor I don't believe you would be able to fit in what you would need to make it a, a, a really nice habitable dwelling uh, the enhancements, as I believe Mr. Williams said, will not be seen from anywhere else. It won't be seen from any neighbours and it will be sympathetic to the other farm buildings that you don't actually see quite so readily on the, the picture that I have in front of me at the moment. So therefore, I would suggest that the um, uh, existing building is capable of conversion. There's a good ready access to Axminster. In actual fact, this is very near to the southern end of the Axminster Master Plan development and the junction of the North-South Relief Road with Lime Road sits just below this access. So there'll be easy access for, for people using the new dwelling to be able to move out of the town and be able to travel to Chard on the new 
north south relief road without having to uh, create any further congestion in the center of axminster so therefore i'm very much in favor of this application it's very much in keeping with the local surroundings and therefore uh, madam chairman i would suggest this application should be approved thank you councillor melding um councillor hall next Thank you very much and good morning everybody and I don't think I need to repeat what um, Councillor Molings just said uh, but really to add on um, I will declare my in, uh, interest as a county councillor the access and highway safety uh, 18 uh, forward slash 1403 forward slash full is yet to be constructed obviously um, that would in my view if this was um, approved by the committee that would really need to be put in place before any development was put uh, 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 built through. Uh, but I mean, I look at this, I do not see any actual harm to it. And as has already been said, this uh, with the agreed master plan, which was decided on the 29th of January 2019, I personally have no issue with this. And I would actually recommend that this is approved. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Hall. Right. Committee, I see three blue hands up. Um, Councillor Skinner first. Oh, Chairman, um, Councillor Jackson as ward member would like to speak. Oh, right, yes. Yeah, Councillor Jackson. Many thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I've just got a couple of points on this. Um, I don't want to, um, uh, to, to go over uh, things that my colleagues have said. Um, but I also share uh, concerns that if this is approved, that the access road on the other application really ought to be a condition that that's delivered first. Um, and also the, um, the ecological impact, uh, I think there needs to be conditions in there uh, to mitigate the, the, the issues around bats. So there is those elements, um, but those aside, I really welcome the debate from the committee uh, I'm, I'm very aware that we um, that there are issues that fall outside of uh, the local plan and um, and with the absence of a neighbourhood plan that might um, give weight and facilitate delivery of, of certain developments like this in what is effectively quite a remote area. Um, I feel incredibly torn on this application um, and the local plan itself is due for review so I think uh, a healthy debate on this would be sensible um, and I do also recognise the applicant's efforts to ensure that the, uh, the plan is as in keeping uh, with the existing uh, properties there as possible so I just wanted to make that comment thank you very much. Thank you Councillor Jackson. Um, right, committee, Councillor Skinner. Thank you, uh, uh, Madam Chairman. Um, I've read this uh, report with um, uh, uh, quite um, in, in some depth and taking it on board as to for what it is. And, and in fact, I always believe that the, I do believe that the very existence of a planning committee is for applications such as this. The way the report has been written, has been written extremely well. I think the officer's recommendation in coming up with the recommendation that they have, with the policies that we have in place, on balance, they were probably right in what they're saying. But I'll go further. And by going further is, as far as I'm concerned, looking at this application on balance, when you look into the benefits that could come from this application, I actually think that I'm gonna be supportive of this application. I'm gonna be supportive of the application because I've been very much in support of barn conversions for farm buildings, redundant farm buildings uh, in coming forward. And what was always the big issue for me was is how they're converted. So they still have the fenestrate of looking like still the farm buildings. I believe the application has achieved that within this, within this application. I, um, I actually believe that the location, as closely as it is in walking distance to the shops and whatever, is, is actually a benefit that you don't usually get with, with farm buildings, as far as that's concerned, old farm units. Um, so for me, 
I think there are many things that this hits. I don't think it's too big. I think in going up the way that it is, because the buildings are what they are, the application works extremely well. And no date, they've worked very hard with the officers. The officers have been in a difficult position on the scale of the building. I think what the benefits that come from this application are far outweighed, and I mean far outweighed, by any detriment that would come from an application as this being successful. What I would like to do, Madam Chairman, if I would, I'd hear what other people have to say, but I'm very comfortable with recommending this application for approval. I'd like to Thank second that, you. Madam Chairman. Who's that seconding? Councillor Desarum, if possible, please. Okay. Thank you. So we have a proposal and a seconder. Um, now, Councillor Davey. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to go on very long because uh, I have a feeling that the uh, committee is minded to um, approve this application. And I do sometimes wonder if the uh, officers pop in applications like this just so we can feel good that we've overruled the officers for once. Um, <laughs> on, uh, on policy D8, um, I, I can see the reasons for that. You can't have people saying, well, there's a chicken house there which we'd like to convert and all we need to do is build a house on it. Um, so it, it, it wouldn't, you know, um, be a good idea. There's a very good, good reason for that policy. Um, and there is some uh, a, a substantial alteration, I suppose. But the, the buildings would not be viable otherwise. You, it's only a two-bedroom property. If this had was being turned into a five-bedroom property and, and involved substantial building, then I could see that the, there would be a problem with that. But it's really not viable unless you add that little bit of extra space. And to me, it is quite a small extra space. Um, as has already been pointed out, the farmhouse is already um, two story, so I don't think it would be out of keeping. And it looks to me like a very sympathetic uh, restoration of those buildings. Um, it's in a sustainable location. There's no argument about that, even though it is technically in the open countryside. Uh, in fact, I think it's closer to Axminster than I am living in Exmouth, and I'm not even on the edge of it. Um, the access, um, I don't think it necessarily needs to be made contingent on approval of the other access, although I can't see any particular reason why that would be refused. Um, but there's presumably access to the farmhouse already, so I don't see why we need to make it contingent on, uh, on that access. Um, so for all those reasons, uh, I, I think this is a bit of a no-brainer. Thank you, Councillor Davey. Um, Councillor Desarum. Th thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Th thank you, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm happy to, to support this application uh, because, as has been said, um, there's going to be no significant harm on the countryside and it's going to be an improvement. And also, I draw members' attention to when I read the report, page 10, which said the background, which said the prior approval has been granted for the change of use of the two modern farm buildings to the south under permitted development rights. So clearly, uh, the buildings are redundant, and um, uh, if we make this decision today, it would obviously, as Councillor Skinner has said, the benefits would definitely outweigh any negative effects. So that is why I'm more than happy to, to be the second of this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Key. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Yes, I mean, uh, these buildings, I mean, are, are tucked in where they are. They are no longer... Uh, any use for agricultural purposes, as one could see, because with machinery nowadays, uh, it's absolutely out of the question. You'd have to probably demolish half of the walls there to be able to get in with the machinery. Um, the only, I mean, there probably is a little bit of vision across the valley to Beaver uh, Lane, where a bit of it would be seen, but it's so far away that it's not, um, not going to be that noticeable. I do feel that uh, the new access um, should be uh, agreed first. And I think this could be done with the uh, coordination of the ward members because where, the, if anybody knows, I mean, some of the access to one knows, this existing access is right on a bend and it's not very nice access at all. You can see to the left, but you can't see to the right. And so I think that the new access is a very 
uh, important thing to actually have before this development uh, goes on. Um, unfortunately, if the regeneration of the Axminster Road comes forward, then unfortunately there won't be, the, the people that walk to the town will have to walk across the access of this road, which is not gonna be uh, that easy. But otherwise, yes, I mean, I fully support this. These buildings have seen their life as agricultural buildings and now should be put into good use. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Key. Councillor Woodward. Yeah, well, I won't repeat everything everybody else has said. Everybody else is, is for it. I think it's a very sympathetic um, conversion. I mean, that may be a matter of degree, but I would support the application. Thank you. And um, Councillor Howe. Yeah, again, like others, I'm not going to repeat everything else has said. Um, we've got to do something with these buildings within, with respect to the character they're in. So as such, I actually support the recommendation with conditions that need to be added, of course. Um, but we need to justify ourselves. And that justification is the harder part of the balancing act, and which is why the officers have come up with their refusal. But we don't have to necessarily agree with officers. And I think this is the point. I don't believe the alterations are that material. I don't believe it harms the character or the nature of the building. And with the right materials and uh, everything else, I don't believe the domestic appearance, as the officers say, will be fully evident. It, it is a redundant, lovely old redundant building, um, which should be kept and maintained in a strange way. And by putting it to practical use with a small scale building, I think it's the best way to maintain the countryside and make it live and carry on living. So I will support it as well. Thank you, Councillor Howe. Um, can I ask um, Mr Rose, uh, this looks as though it's going towards approval. Um, could you address the, um, the issue of the access and whether that should be in place first before any development goes ahead? Yeah, so um, I, uh, f firstly, um, I think that uh, the proposer and seconder have outlined the, the reasons uh, why um, they think they should support the scheme in relation to policy D8. So I'm happy with that, happy with that justification. Yeah, in terms of the conditions, I was going to say that I think uh, it would be helpful if members do approve that they uh, delegate the conditions to officers in, in a consultation with the ward members. And actually the applicant has shown the new access within the red line of this application. So uh, it's, it's, it's within there and it's shown as being proposed. Um, so I don't have any concerns with a condition there linking the conversion of these buildings to the provision of that access, if that's what members, uh, members oh. want. Okay. Um, members, um, would you be willing to have this as a condition? Um, assuming the application is going to be approved? Madam Chairman, could I could I speak, please? Yeah, I, I think Councillor Pratt's down first. I was wanting to speak on the basis of being the um, um, what did I do? Recommended the approval, but okay. Let Councillor speak, Pratt speak first, and I'll come. Thank you. you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Pratt. Councillor Pratt, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I just wanted to say that I uh, would support this application uh, along the lines of what's been already discussed by the other councillors. Um, despite uh, the uh, the word in, in uh, policy D8, um, but I think um, there must be some discretion in dealing with these uh, policies. And maybe that's something we should look at when we uh, next deal with uh, the local plan. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, back to you, Councillor Skinner. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. As far as the um, um, uh, road and the conditions that you want to put on them. 
I'm, I'm, uh, I don't really see the uh, the benefit in in that in one in one sense. I, 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 I what I would I think what I would sooner do within within my proposal, if I could, Madam Chairman, and I, and I ask Chris if this is feasible, I would sooner be left leave it with we have approved the application and that with the officers and the ward members that as far as a condition with the road is concerned that it is negotiated with the officers obviously the applicant the officers and the ward members in the best way of going forward i believe they know their area far better than any of us and they are best placed to work with the officers to come up with the right condition in the way that they see fit. And I don't have a problem with that because I'm not particularly fussed whether there's a condition on putting the road in first before they start the development or not. I don't think that necessarily works on the scheme of this scale. It's a small scheme, it's not a big housing scheme. It's a small scheme uh, and I'm quite oblivious about it, to be honest, I'm quite easy peasy about it. So I don't want a condition that it makes it difficult if you like, for one, for, for lack of another wording. So I'm more than comfortable with the officers and the ward members in working together and coming up with how they see going forward in the best way. Thank you. Um, did see Councillor Howe's hand up? It's, oh, it's just there back again. Councillor yeah. Howe. Well, I was umming and ahhing about what um, the proposer, Councillor uh, Skinner, has just said. Um, and I fundamentally disagree with him. Um, having heard Councillor Hall and um, Councillor, I've forgotten her name, sorry, um, the other councillor from uh, Exminster, Jackson. Terribly sorry, Councillor Jackson. I'm having one of those days. I need more coffee. Um, both say this is fairly essential, the access. It was applied for previously, so the applicant obviously agreed it was needed. I think it's essential. You, you push these things when the safety concerns are there and the reasons are there to do it. So if that condition is not there, I shall vote against the approval. Thank you. Um, I don't see any comment in the report from Highways. Were they consulted, Mr Rose? Yeah, so Highways, uh, highways haven't commented on this application, but they, they were supportive of the application for the access because, as has been mentioned by the war members, the existing access isn't in the best position on the bend. Uh, so they're certainly supportive of the, the new access from a highway safety point of view. And um, I think the, the, the same goes for this application. If there's going to be an extra dwelling there, then that adds to the, the, the benefit of that, that new access and the safety benefits it brings. Um, so uh, they didn't comment on this application because I think they were supportive of that previous access. Thank you. So, um, Madam Chairman, could I make myself clear, please? Because I don't yeah. think I've made myself clear. I am not against the access. I believe the recommendations going forward is to have the new access there. I'm not I'm not saying that the real, what I was saying was that it, there was a comment from Councillor Jackson that the access should be put in first that was my only comment I'm not commenting whether I believe in having the access my only comment was whether the access came first before they did under any other development and on that point I was saying I was easy I was not saying that we don't need to have this access at all that is not what I was saying so I want to be clear, I'm going with the application, with the access, it was whether or not the access came before the development or not. That was my point. Thank you, Councillor Skinner. Thank you. Okay. But if there's a condition that the access should be there, um, over to you, Mr Rose. Um, yeah, we, we would usually, in these sort of circumstances, the and, and we can talk with the ward members, the condition would usually be that that new access should be in place and available for use prior to the first occupation of the new dwelling. So it doesn't have Thank to be you. in before they build, but before they occupy. Thank you. So can we take a vote now, members? Oh, Councillor Davies got his hand up. Uh, well, it was just to say, isn't uh, the road already part of this application? Actually, as Mr. Rose pointed out, it's outlined in red. Um, so it has to be part of the application. So I, I actually, I don't have a problem 
um, with making that a condition. Thank you. So can we take a vote on this now with the condition that the access goes in first? Can I just confirm what the members are voting on, Chairman? Yeah, is that Shirley? Yes, it is. I can't see you. <laughs> oh, apologies. <laughs> okay. Um, so members, you have a motion to approve um, based on the um, location being sustainable for the development and the development is in keeping as it is small scale and close to facilities and the benefits outweigh the detriment and this is with the conditions delegated to officers and ward members thank you apologies if, no. you, could, <laughs> if you could please when your name is called um confirm your you support the grant you're against the grant or you abstain thank you right wendy okay thank you councillor bloxham i support support the proposal to approve councillor brown support the proposal to approve councillor chamberlain i support the proposal to approve Councillor Davy. I support the proposal. Councillor Tassaran. I, I support the recommendation to approve. Councillor Gazard. For the application. Councillor Howe. Support the application. Councillor Key. Support the application. Councillor McCoxon. Support the application. Councillor Pook. Support the application to approve. Councillor Pratt. Support the application to approve. Councillor Skinner. Support the application to approve. Councillor Whibley. Uh, support the application to approve. Councillor Woodward. I support the application to approve. Councillor Rag. I abstain. So that is clearly carried. Um, there's always one. Anyway, um, we move on then to the next application, which is ah, here it is on the bottom of the page. Twenty zero six six one. VAR minor, it's on page 16, and this is the former Axminster Police Station. Um, Mrs. Tusker has registered to speak. Um, is she in the meeting, please? Um, yes, hello. Hello, Mrs. Tusker, welcome to the meeting. Um, you will be allowed three minutes um, and you'll know 30 seconds before your three minutes is up. Um, but before I ask you to speak, we'll go to Mr. Rose to present the application, please. Thank you, Chairman. So this is an application for a variation of plans to a 2019 consent and that 2019 consent uh, on this site uh, granted eight dwellings. So uh, we're the former police station, so uh, right near the, the school, quite central to Axminster in the built up area boundary. Uh, and the 2019 scheme approved five dwellings at the front here, three at the back. And you could see from uh, the green on this plan uh, that there's a number of trees and open space on the site. So the, this application relates to variations to the heights of these buildings here at the front of the site. So those those five units. Um, the application is before you because it's contrary to the view uh, of the war member. Uh, as I say, principles already been granted uh, and the site's well located and sustainable in Axminster. So the proposal relates to these five units here that you can hopefully see on the screen. Um, and it's to raise the height of this end unit and these units by half a metre. So you might be able to see on the screen a dotted red line. That's the height of the buildings uh, as already approved. 
So it would raise the height of those buildings by half a meter and lower the height of this unit in the middle by about 0.4 of a meter. And again, on the side view, you can see the original uh, roof line. So we're raising by half a meter. The application originally proposed dormers on this front elevation, um, but they were, they were removed and replaced by these three roof lights. Um, and there's no changes to the, the other three dwellings on the plot, which are proposed back in that location. So this is the location here for that, that block of five units. Uh, so on this corner, uh, the, um, the increase in the height of the buildings is considered to be minimal and it will allow the applicant to uh, go in those units, go from two to three bed units. Uh, and as I say, we've got the dormers removed because there is some relationship with the property here to the left. So the dormers were removed and replaced with Velux windows. As I say, the principle of development is established and okay. In terms of that increase in height, it's not considered that that half a meter increase in the height of those buildings will be recognizable from the street scene, certainly not harmful to the visual amenity of the area. Um, and in fact, one of the units, the roofs being lowered. Um, and in terms of that uh, amenity impact, you'll see from the report that there's um, 13 meters from the front of the, the, the properties to the boundary, 24 meters before you get to the closest house, uh, although you can see there's a slight levels difference. But at those distances, uh, and given that hedge in between, and the removal of the dormers, it's not considered that there'd be any harmful overlooking or detrimental impact on the immunity of this, this property opposite. Um, because there's an increase in floor space, there's uh, an associated legal agreement that would be needed with the application because in this part of Axminster, for this size of scheme, there's a contribution towards affordable housing required and the increase in floor space uh, means there's a slight increase in the contribution over the previous scheme that was approved. So uh, to summarise, the, the principle is OK. It's already been established. The scheme is very similar to the uh, development that's already been approved. It's just raising the, the ridge of three of the units by half a metre to allow the use of the roof space and lowering of the other unit by 0.4 metres. That's not considered to have a detrimental impact on the street scene, and it's not considered to be any more harmful to the amenities of these properties on the of this property on the other side of the road. So, due to that, the application is recommended for approval, but subject to conditions and that legal agreement to secure the increased affordable housing contribution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Um, <clears throat> now, Mrs. Tasker, would you like to begin, please? Yes, good morning everybody and thank you for this opportunity to speak. I won't take up much time because the officer report is very thorough and that presentation was also very thorough. As the officer has explained, it's proposed to make minor changes to the roof heights of the terrace of three dwellings to raise the ridge of some and lower that of others. This would enable the provision of roof accommodation within units one to three to provide an extra bedroom. The proposed change makes better use of the site, offering slightly larger units and so a better standard of accommodation that would be more suitable for families. We originally submitted plans showing the second floor to be served by a dormer to the front roof slope of each unit, um, but we discussed the neighbour concerns with the planning officer and so we amended the scheme to swap the dormer for a roof light, so roof lights both to front and rear are proposed now. So there can be no concern of overlooking from the accommodation in the roof. And um, as you had explained, the separation distance to the houses opposite on the west side of Lyme Close is approximately 24 metres. That's from house to house. Um, your conservation officer raises no objection, advising no harm to the setting of the nearby listed buildings to the west or to the character and appearance of the approach to the conservation area. And we are in full agreement with the conservation officer's request for conservation style roof lights flush for the roof. I hope that you will feel able to support this application and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tasker. Um, <clears throat> call upon the ward members now. Councillor Moulding. Have you have you called on me to speak? 
Councillor Moulding. Chairman, have you called on me to speak? This is Andrew Moulding. Yes, I have. Can you I don't hear know whether me? you can hear me at all. I, 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 can I, hear, I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I may have to leave the meeting and come back. Can catch. All right, but we'll move on to Councillor Hall then. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, hopefully you can all hear me. Yes. Okay, uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, on Saturday, uh, I went out and had another look at this area. Um, I know the area very well. And uh, when I was up there having a look, um, one of the residents came out and actually spoke to me about the site in general. And uh, <laughs> the words, and he, he said, um, after about 24 hours later that he's also spoke to other residents and keeping this balance and I do go and speak to residents when it's uh, any issues which can actually affect them their feeling was there is actually no objection as long as the third story is in a loft space and not another floor we are keen for work to start as becoming more of an eyesore day by day now, when we're actually looking at this application and there is an increase in the roof space, we have got to be mindful and with the presentation with uh, what Chris Rowe's done. But my main concern and my main comments, which I put to Chris Rose, was about the street scene. And so really, with my further discussions with the um, local residents, I'd be very interested to see what the committee decide on this one because I'm a little bit 50-50 on this one, to be perfectly honest. Beforehand, I was really concerned about the street scene. But as I said, after having discussions with the residents and always trying to keep an open mind when we're coming to these areas, I thought it was important I actually brought these points to you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Hall. Councillor Moulding, are you there yet? Madam Chairman, I've rejoined the meeting and oh, hopefully well, you can now hear Andrew. me. I, I, could you hear me before? Because I couldn't we hear could you. We could hear you. I don't yeah. think you could hear us. I couldn't hear anything. Right, no. here we go. And I couldn't hear, I didn't hear what Councillor Hall said. So uh, this is completely independent of uh, Councillor Hall, my colleague in Axminster. You can see from the picture in front of you, that's the Magistrates Court, a single story building as is the police station. And those are the buildings that will be demolished to make way for this development. And I was always um, uh, accepting the fact that this site would be developed. And I always assumed it would be two story buildings as are the previous buildings that are already in line close. There's about eight of those. I suppose they're all two story. And um, there they are, you can see them on the right hand side of that picture there. Two story buildings and I always assume that um, in harmony with those buildings we would have two story buildings going up, particularly bearing in mind that right opposite there are two um, listed buildings, the Laurels and Tanners Cottage, and I may, wanted to make sure that this development was in sympathy with that. And I was amazed originally when we had three story buildings. And I have to say, Madam Chairman, I don't know if you're the same as me, I don't like three story domestic buildings. I much prefer traditional two story buildings in a town scene. And, and I was very much against that. And I think that was originally recognized by the developer who then decided, well, if we can't have three-storey buildings with dormers, let's put in some Velux windows, but still have three-storey buildings. And I will have to say that, again, I'm not in favour of Velux windows in a town scene overlooking the much smaller listed buildings opposite. Hence my reason for objecting to this uh, development, and that was why I objected. So. Um, 
uh, I'll leave it for the committee to decide. Thank you, Councillor Moulding. It's a good job you don't live in the town wall where we have five story buildings. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, then uh, over to committee and um, Councillor Skinner, you're first. Uh, is Councillor Jackson a ward member? Is she? Does she, she want to speak on this, Councillor Jackson? Yes, please. Yep. Let, let Councillor Jackson go first, Sorry, Madam. That, that only came this morning. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, okay. I have to say, uh, I initially opposed the original development. I had um, concerns uh, about overdevelopment. Um, I have concerns that this uh, is um, abutting the conservation area. Uh, and, uh, I didn't want to retract, uh, detract from the, the overall character of the area. And as uh, my colleague Andrew Morton has also mentioned, the adjacent properties are two-storey properties. So I'm comforted to see that the applicant has uh, changed the dormer windows for um, roof windows. That's great. Um, and I've got to acknowledge that. However, um, I do think we need to be uh, conscious that with the additional bedrooms comes additional occupants and with additional occupants comes additional parking, um, which for me, given that I had concerns that this was overdevelopment in the first place, um, that really just emphasises that. So I... If I'm looking at this particular variation in isolation um, and I'm removing that from my initial objections, uh, I feel quite torn and I do welcome the uh, committee's debate. Um, I can't in good conscience um, support it because I didn't support the original application but I do recognise that the applicant has worked with officers to try and make the best of the variation that they're seeking. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Right, over to the committee. And did we have Councillor Skinner first? His hands disappeared. No, I'm, I'm still here. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, well, you, you were was... first, so go ahead. Thank you. Um, yeah, this one is, uh, this is quite a, a challenging one. Um, very interesting uh, regarding the size of uh, a three-storey dwelling, although it's now going to be a, a roof space. Um, and listening to Councillor Moulding and his view, and I take that on board. And I also listened to Councillor Hall and what he had to say, and listened to the Councillor Jackson, who was opposed, who would probably not like to be opposed, but at the same time, she was opposed to start with, but now feels torn. And it is a difficult one, and I do, I do understand that. Um, I read this with quite, um, uh, to start with, I, I was going down the road of thinking, is, is this all a little bit big in, in the area where it is? On balance and listening to the applicant and listening to Councillor Hall uh, and listening to Councillor Jackson, and I still understand <laughs> Councillor Moulding's view, um, I'm actually going to support this application along with the officers. It's one of those difficult ones that is on an on balance again, rather a bit like the, the last one, really. So I'm, I'm Madam Chairman, I, I don't think I'm going to add much more because I think everybody else has also read the report. You don't need me uh, uh, repeating what's within the report. Um, I'm going to recommend a recommendation along with the officers, a recommendation of approval. Thank you. I'll Thank second you. that, Madam Chairman. Councillor Key, second. Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, next got Councillor Pook. Uh, good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> um, perhaps I'm different, looking at it from a different perspective, but I think this is a very simple application for us to look at. The amendment we're looking, and just remember, it's an amendment to a design that's been approved. The amendment mm -hmm. we're looking at is a half meter extent uh, um, lifting of the roof to allow those um, attic boot rooms to be more, more usable. The harm or perceived harm from raising at half a meter um, is so far outweighed by the benefit of getting that extra room. I can see no reason at all to, to object. 
Um, and just looking at the benefit of those rooms, um, having developed how affordable and, and um, low cost housing, the benefit of trying to get that extra room is um, so great if you can, um, because it turns what is effectively a starter home into a family home. Um, just addressing a question, a point that Councillor Jackson made about the extra space um, possibly creating more parking. Though I think that is, is irrelevant because um, you, the, we're talking about having these homes as being either starter or family homes. We aren't putting another car driving person in that room. It's going to be a young child or something like that. So, you know, um, I think there's no disadvantages. I think there's a 100% advantage from doing it. I will support the application um, and I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Councillor Pook. Councillor Davey. Thank you. I won't go on too long because uh, I think a lot of it's already been said. This is a modest increase in height of about uh, half a metre um, to a scheme that's already been approved. Um, I understand the misgivings about three-storey houses, but they don't look like three-storey houses. They are basically two-storey houses with an attic conversion, and there are plenty of those around. Um, so I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, with regard to the parking, um, well, until you get teenage children in that third bedroom, uh, you might then have an issue with parking. Uh, but I think Councillor Puka is right that these are going to be family homes. Um, on page 31, it does say the supporting statement advises the application has arisen following consideration of the type of housing in demand locally. Um, and uh, that is given as a justification for adding the third bedroom. Uh, now, I know that uh, adding a third bedroom immediately uh, increases the value of the property. And I just wonder if Mr. Rose can perhaps advise what evidence has been shown uh, of that need locally uh, for three bedroom as opposed to two bedroom homes. Thank you for you, Chairman. Yeah. I, I... To be honest, I don't think there is uh, any any strong evidence either way, because if you bear in mind that there's quite a lot of development that's been carried out in Axminster, quite a mix of houses, particularly at the mm -hmm. Bovis estate nearby. Um, I think that all, what it does in this case is it just provides a better mix of houses on this site in terms of providing some two bed and some three bed. But I don't I'm not aware of any particular uh, strong need either way in Axminster for two or three beds because uh, there has been quite a mix provided previously. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Um, Councillor Key, next. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Yes, I was more than happy to, when I read this application to start with, I felt three storey buildings. Now we've got some of those in Honiton on the old um, sawmill site. And I was horrified because I thought, my goodness me, what the, certainly the wrong place to have three stories. But now they're going to have them with Velox windows in the roof. Um, I mean, really, to be quite honest, they're going to look like, uh, like any other house, really. But they're going to have that extra room in the roof. Mm. And so uh, it's an ideal site to be developed. It's been left sort of vacant for a long time with the, uh, with the uh, police um, uh, and, and court there. So, um, and I was reading the comments on the uh, housing strategy officer that we're going to um, uh, get um, 63, nearly 64,000 uh, for um, affordable how towards affordable housing. Um, so I, I really think this is going to be uh, an excellent development with plenty of uh, green space there as well to make use of this site that has been sort of obsolete for sort of some considerable time. So I fully support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Key. Um, Councillor McLaughlin. Oh, sure. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to really uh, re just say um, exactly what um, Councillor Key has just said, um, apart from the fact that um, I think Councillor Moulding said that the windows will overlook the neighbouring property, but as they've changed to Villex windows, they don't overlook, they will just be sat 
looking up into the sky, not overlooking the property across the way. Um, the, the family homes, mo most people, if they can buy, if they only have one child, buy, buy a home and then probably, you know, have another child, they won't have to move if there are three bedrooms in these properties. Um, the police station, I know it's of its time, but it's not pretty. It doesn't do anything for the street scene, truly. Um, and I think these homes will actually enhance the street scene rather than detract from it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Woodward. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm actually speaking from uh, a roof space in a semi-detached house where I live, you might be able to tell by the background with a sloping roof. Um, and uh, the height is exactly the same as next door. They are a two story building. I suppose you could say I'm a third story up here. Looking out my Velux window, all I can see is the tops of trees and the sky over Exmouth. So um, I think the change in the roof height with the Velux windows makes hardly any difference. Very minor alteration. So I will be following the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Desarum. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, when I first read the paperwork, I too had my doubts, like some of the ward members, it was a grave concern. And then very helpfully, we got the email from Joe Tasker, and I read through it, it's very, very succinct. And I was particularly struck by the fact that she said that the proposed change makes better use of the site, offering slightly larger units, more suitable for families and thus meeting local housing demand better. And also that the fact that she indicated that the conservation officer raises no objections. So for those reasons, um, I too, like every other colleagues, am mindful to go along with the recommendation to approve. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, Councillor Blo Bloxham. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I'm speaking from a three bedroomed house, uh, sorry, three storey house with six Velux windows in the top floor. And I can confirm that you cannot see and overlook other properties. And as I'm in a town with houses close by, I would be able to see into their gardens if they were conventional windows. So I would uh, concur with everybody else and support this application. Thank you. Right. We've had a proposal and the seconder. Um, Councillor Skinner proposed, Councillor Key seconded. Can we take a vote, please? Would you like me to um, confirm? Uh, yes, Shirley, can you just read out? Yes, members, Thank you. you've got a motion to grant planning permission subject to the conditions listed in the report and completion of a deed of variation to the uh, original section 106 agreement so it links to the new permission and to cover the increase in contributions towards off-site affordable housing provision and management of the on-site open space. If you could please confirm when your name is called your support for the grant of permission or against the grant of permission or abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Wendy, over to you. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Kim Bloxham. I support as officer recommendation to approve. Councillor Colin Brown. Support. Councillor Sarah Chamberlain. I support the application. Councillor Ollie Davy. Support. Councillor Brewster Sarum. Support the recommendation to approve. Councillor Steve Gazard. For. Councillor Mike Howe. Support. Councillor David Key. Support. Councillor Cathy McLaughlin. Support. Councillor Jeff Pook. Support grant to approve. Councillor Jeff Pratt. Support. Councillor Philip Skinner. Support the recommendation to approve. Councillor Joe Whibley. Support. Councillor Tony Woodward. I support the uh, approval. And Councillor Eileen Rag. I support. Thank you, members. And can I thank Ms. Kalska for giving such a concise uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Right. Um, we move on now to 
application number 20-0324, variation, um, Queen Stride Space, Queen Stride Exmouth. Um, now, I believe, Wendy, you were going to read a statement on behalf of Mrs. Membry? Yes, that's correct. Um, we're having trouble um, contacting Mr. Keynes at the moment, so um, we're, um, we're trying to um, phone him. He's not picking up, so we're, uh, if you could um, go to Chris for his presentation and then hopefully we'll uh, get Mr. Keynes in. Okay. Um, Chris, or should we defer this until Mr. Keynes gets here? Yeah, okay, thank you, um, bye. Is he there? In the process of logging in, so oh, good. Here. Good. Okay. Um, yeah. Chair, if Mr. I could Rose. before you start. Chair, if I could before Mr. Rose starts, obviously we all on this committee have a vested interest in this because it is partly, as explained in the, in the report, partly East Devon Council land. Yeah. So you need to make a declaration on behalf of the full committee the, the reason being, obviously, etc. Okay, uh, over to Shirley for that one. Shirley, do we need to? I would have thought it was obvious. It would, it would be useful if you could make a declaration on behalf okay. of the uh, committee. Okay, do we do, do that individually then? No, it should be sufficient for you to do it on behalf of everybody. Thank you. So everybody in agreement with that, we all have an interest. Yes, thank you. Okay, Mr. Rose. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, we've got an application here that's for a variation of plans to a previous consent. So previous consent granted for the water sports centre down on Exmouth Seafront that most people will be uh, aware of. And this proposal is to um, put a retractable glass canopy roof over a previously approved terrace. And there are a couple of fenestration changes and also a change to the car parking layout, which results in the loss of two spaces, but the introduction of to electric charging points. As has just been mentioned, this uh, application is in front of you because East Devon uh, District Council has a financial interest in the land uh, and what's been happening there. So in 2018, consent was granted for a new water sports centre on the site and that's currently being constructed on site. And this is the layout for that. So you had the main water sports centre here, you had a couple of retail units and then you had the, the parking area and a, and a substation. Um, so we're right on the seafront uh, in Exmouth and this proposal mainly relates to this area here, which is to put this retractable roof over the, and that's this here, over the external terrace to allow that restaurant area's terrace to be used, um, well, all year round or at least more than uh, if it didn't have a roof over it. Um, the sites uh, in the flood zone, which uh, I think were the, the uh, a couple of objectors had mentioned, but the issues of flooding were addressed as part of the previous application. And we've got a water sports centre here, so there's no vulnerable uses. So it is appropriate for, for such uh, proposals to go in a, in a flood zone. Um, so the main issues are the visual impact from this canopy, the visual changes to the building, the loss of the spaces and any amenity impact. So if I move on, this is the side elevation. So you can see here, this is the retractable canopy, nothing else changes to the proposal. And it's probably better in these views because you can see the extent of the canopy here. So all the rest of this, the bulk of those buildings was already approved. So it's this change to this canopy here that we're looking at. Uh, and given the, the given that it's viewed against the existing building uh, and it's retractable, it's not considered to result any any uh, the visual impact considered to be acceptable, particularly when you weigh it against the business benefits that are going to be provided to that restaurant from from having this additional space, particularly at the moment, given the, the impact from coronavirus. Um, and again, you can see the elevations uh, and it relates to this part of the building there. Um, and again, some more images of, of, of what it would look like. And you can see that it, it does fit in with the uh, existing building. 
And this is the building under construction at the moment. So this is where the terrace area will be and the retractable canopy goes on this area there uh, again. And when, so you can see it better in this image there. Um, and looking back, you can see the relationship to the closest residential property. So as I say, the visual impact's acceptable and minimal. There has been a concern about light spill from the terrace, but there's a condition on there to ensure that we can control that. Uh, the visual changes to the building are really just to put in some louvers over the windows. So that's uh, minor changes and positive in terms of uh, the sustainability of the building and keeping out heat or keeping in heat. There, are, there is a loss of two spaces proposed uh, to the car park and that's to access uh, this substation here. But uh, the loss of those two spaces isn't considered to be uh, of any great harm. There's more than adequate spaces to serve this development and members will be aware that as part of the wider scheme, there's a public car park proposed on the, uh, approved even on the other side of the road. Uh, and the other change is the introduction of two electric charging points uh, right next to the building, which again is also a positive to the scheme. And finally, you'll see that the, there's an appropriate assessment attached to the report. So as with the previous application, we've liaised with uh, Natural England to assure that any impacts on the estuary from additional use is, is, is has adequate mitigation. So the proposal is recommended for approval, a small change to the changes to the previous consent. There's no harmful visual impact, uh, no amenity impact. We've got conditions to control the lighting and the substantial distance to the nearest properties. And uh, on top of that, there's a positive economic and business benefits from having this extension or this canopy over the external terrace to allow its use uh, throughout the year. So because of the, for those reasons, the application is recommended for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just one point of clarification, Chris, if I may. Yep. Um, on page 95, uh, impact on highway parking layout, it says the applicant's agent has also clarified that the car park would be for public use and not be a private car park for members only. And further down, it said there's no planning justification to insist that the car park be open to the wider public. So are we to assume that if somebody is a member of the public is parked there to go elsewhere, um, that they they would still be allowed to stay there over um, a restaurant customer? Sorry, yeah, I don't think the, I apologize. I don't think the report makes that clear. As far as, far as I'm Doesn't. aware, that the car park would be used, is available for people that are using this building. So if the public are using this building, they can use the car park, but it isn't a car park that can just be used by the public who aren't using the building. And for that purposes, there's a car park uh, on the opposite yeah. side of the road that's been consented. Yeah. So sorry and if that was unclear. Thank you for that clarification. Um, now, um, is there a statement to be read on behalf of Mrs. Membry, Wendy? Yes, yes, there is. Thank I you. have it in front of me here. Thank you. Okay, so uh, the following objection statement is from Mrs. Anne Membry. <clears throat> I'm objecting to this planning application because of the addition of a canopy onto a building which is already under construction will cause more of an obstruction to the vista at Exmouth Seafront. My other objection to this planning application is because of the loss of seven parking spaces, as mentioned by Devon County Council's Highway Department in their comments to this planning application on the 10th of March 2020. I have spoken to a planning officer who has told me the car park from the Grenadier development will not be a public car park, and I so I presume the car park will only be for exclusive use of staff and customers of what is referred to as side shore. As this development includes a restaurant, cafe, water sports building and retail outlets, there will obviously be a, be a need for a lot of car parking space for staff and users of this development. And with the loss of seven parking spaces, it will probably be necessary for staff and users to occupy some of the East Devon District Council public space, public car park spaces. Public car park spaces are already becoming limited at Exmouth Seafront and often become full because of the increase of visitors to the seafront. 
In the need section for this variation of planning, I noted in the comments it says the need for this variation of planning for a canopy is because this building is in a severely exposed location. The government and environment agency have been advising that new buildings shouldn't be built on coastlines because of the rise in sea levels and the change in weather patterns. For example, more storms that cause more overtopping of sea and sand, which is why I believe this building should never have been given planning permission to be built in an extremely exposed location. But despite this and all the objections to the original planning application for this development, the application with, was passed without taking into consideration any of the comments. In the future, I envisage this building to, will be damaged by storms and the overtopping of the sea and sand because it is in such a severely exposed location. I confirm the objections I, I have to this planning application are because of the loss of seven parking spaces and to the addition of a canopy on a building which has already caused loss to the vista at the seafront and an addition of a canopy will cause even more loss to the vista at Exmouth seafront. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Um... And I should point out on the bottom of page 91, Devon County Highway Authority, I do not believe the loss of these seven parking spaces will create an undue impact upon the local highway network. Um, now, do we have Mr. Keynes, please? Yeah, thank you. Welcome to the meeting, Mr. Keynes. You have three minutes. And 30 seconds before your time is up, you will get a warning. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, you everybody for, for listening to me. And thank you, Chris, for that introduction. I just wanted to address a couple of issues with regards to light. Just wanted to reassure you that we're taking everything uh, in hand to mitigate any access uh, of light from the glass uh, extension uh, by using curtains, but also the only lighting that we're having in there is low impact fistoon lighting which will give it an ambience of very, very low impact uh, so that our guests can enjoy uh, the facilities. Um, the other point I wanted to make out is the benefit and the reason why we're doing it is simply to extend our ability to, to use that area, not just through, through the uh, summer, but also into the winter. I think the, the wind is an issue there. So we are, have concerns with regards to tables and chairs and jumbrellas for some protection for our guests. And so one of the reasons why we want to put a cover on is to ensure that we are able to extend the season into the winter, of course, but also ensure that our guests can enjoy, enjoy the, the, the space out there safely in that exposure, because we know that there's, uh, there's a lot of wind in Exmouth, a lot of sand that carries uh, across the uh, area, and also that, uh, that even in the summer, um, those conditions can, can be a bit blustery. So um, that's also uh, going to allow us in, in this critical time where table space, we need to now exert one meter distance uh, between each table. So having this additional space will also help the viability at this particular point of the project to enable us to uh, profit from as many tables as we can to pay back the rent that we're uh, looking to pay. But overall, we welcome this extension and your consideration for it because I think it would enhance the scheme and also bring a lot of enjoyment to our guests that will be dining in a really modern and up-to-date environment, which will complement the work that's ongoing and Exmouth, which is definitely on the up uh, and uh, a great area for people to come and visit and enjoy uh, seasonal and also regional foods at the facilities. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. Thank, thank you, Mr. Keynes. Um... Right, the ward members, please. Um, thank you, Chairman. Sorry? Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Right, carry on, Councillor Desarum. Th thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just to say that I, I've heard uh, the objections raised by Mrs. Membry, and um, I, I have every sympathy with them, with the concerns that she's raised. But um, obviously, as we've also heard, there are economic benefits uh, which outweigh this 
in particular, uh, as Mr. Keynes has just outlined, the use of the terrace all year round will be of significant benefit. And also, as Mr. Rose has said, there'll be no harm to the visual impact uh, because it, it, it will be set up so that this won't be an issue. And the key point is that there are no uh, residential properties adjoining it. And we all know that the principal development has been accepted already. Uh, so finally, as it said on my report at page 90, it's not diluting the design or impact negatively on the character and appearance of the surroundings, nor the residential amenity. And uh, it also mentions the benefits of the electrical charging points. So for those reasons, um, I would be very happy to propose acceptance of this recommendation if, if a seconder is found. Th thank you so much, Madam Chair. Thank you. Are there any other ward members who wanted to speak? I don't see any notification. No? Uh, right. Councillor Desarm has proposed approval. Do we have a seconder, please? Yes, you do, yeah, Madam yeah, Chair. Who was that? It was Cathy McLaughlin. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank Madam you, Councillor McLaughlin. Yeah? Um, may I just speak as um, portfolio holder for economy? I did have my hand up. Yeah, is that Paul Hayward? It is. Hello, Councillor yeah. Mary. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, well, uh, thank you very much, and, and thank you for allowing me to speak very briefly. Essentially, you know, declaring the same interest as everyone else that you know EBDC has has a vested interest in this. Um, I have noted the um, the objections, from the member of the public, and obviously listened to Mr. Keynes too. Um, I think for this, I'm not on the planning committee, as you know, but I believe that the the benefits to this, um, and they've been outlined in the uh, or the economic benefits to this, and they've been outlined by the office. Uh, very clearly in the report, um, they outweigh, far outweigh any potential harm. I believe actually there'll be a, an ongoing asset to this facility. Um, I appreciate there is some cyclical basis that, you know, by allowing this, we allow the um, the owner, the, the, the user to, to make more money and thus pay our rent. So it is cyclical, but of course, sometimes we have to park those things and think of the wider benefits. And on this, um, I'm happy to you know, support this. I don't get a vote, but just to let members on the panel know that from an economic perspective and also a tourist perspective, um, and partly a, re a regenerative uh, perspective, uh, perspective to Exmouth, I, I think this is uh, a good thing. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy to support this variation in principle. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hayward. Um, now, um, Councillor Howe, I think you missed part of the presentation, didn't you? Councillor Howe? Yes, sorry. Um, I was booted out by, by some reason. As I didn't hear the objectors, um, I will refrain now from taking part in this discussion and I won't vote. Oh, I'll abstain at the end because I didn't hear what the objectors said and I think that's unfair. So yeah, th you. thank you. That's the usual procedure. Um, right. Now, I, was I, next, I, was, I was next, Councillor. Yes, 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 yes. I can see you, Councillor Skinner, don't you? Right. Come on, <laughs> press on. Okay. Am I? Am I speaking next? You you usually go first, Philip. Yeah, right. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to support this application um, wholeheartedly. Um, do I need to? Just uh, um, could I ask uh, Shirley? Uh, I was a previous chairman of the Regeneration Board, and I was very much involved in pushing this agenda. Do I need to declare that as an interest? I suppose I ought to, really. You were um, also champion of Exmouth at one time. Cool, that was many years ago, Eileen. That yeah, but I'm like an through. elephant. Those, I don't forget. Those records would be lost now, Eileen. But, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was a champion of Exmouth, so I've been very supportive of this. But in this particular application, I'm making yeah. that, I suppose I ought to be making that declaration of interest that as a previous, in my previous life, I was a uh, Exmouth regeneration uh, chairman, board chairman. Um, I'm going to very much uh, propose a recommendation of, of approval uh, on this. It's already uh, been uh, proposed. And well, I, then, then I'll second. Then the... you're a bit late there. Let... Oh, am I? Oh, okay. Oh, I'm, oh, okay. Okay, that's where we are. Um, the reason I want to uh, really speak, Madam Chairman, is is in understanding this application and the way that it, it went forward and understanding, I thought the applicant spoke extremely well, put over a very good case. And as far as the, um, uh, I did hear what the uh, lady 
who was speaking against the application. I understand some of the reasons that, that people have and respect other people's opinions and I respect their views. But overall, Madam Chairman, I think this is a, a very good addition to the, uh, to the building and I have no problem in supporting it whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Councillor Whipley. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I just think listening to some of the objections, um, that the, the building is is nearly completed. Uh, the application to build it has, you know, was, was passed ages ago. This is this is a small change, and if the people who want to make the change think that it's gonna it's it's gonna increase the uh, sort of revenue generation and give something to the town um, over. A longer part of the year I, I can't see any reason other than to accept this because it it's a very very small material change in the building so yes I shall be voting that way. Thank you. Councillor Gazard. Thank you Chair. Um, yeah I suppose I better declare I was a former member of the Exmouth Regeneration Board. Um, I, I will be supporting this application but it's a pity that this wasn't made in the original application because I, I would have thought it would have been thought of at that time. I welcome the extra charging points and um, the idea that this space can be used during the winter is also to be welcomed. So um, I will be supporting the application, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Pratt, please. Yes, uh, Chair, thank you. Um, <clears throat> just supporting what uh, my colleague Paul Haywood said about the economy, uh, this uh, proposal now for uh, the restaurant will be um, a winner as far as I can see, a good location for a meal in the evening time during the winter. Thank you, Councillor Pratt. Um, Right, now, um, we're ready to take a vote on this. Over to Shirley to sum up, please. Thank you, Chairman. We have two elements to the motion for you to vote on today. Um, for this one, you have a motion to adopt the appropriate assessment appended to the report and to grant permission subject to the conditions listed and completion of a section 106 legal agreement to secure the matters listed in the report. Therefore, please, when your name is called, can you support your grant, your, indicate your support for the grant, whether you're against the grant or whether you're abstaining. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Shirley. You. Thank you. Councillor Bloxham. I support approval as per officer recommendation. Councillor Brown. Support. Councillor Chamberlain. I support. Councillor Davy. I support both recommendations. Councillor Desaron. Support as per the recommendations to approve. Councillor Gazard. Support. Councillor Howe. Abstain. Councillor Key. Support. Councillor McLaughlin. Support. Councillor Pook. Support. Councillor Pratt. Support. Councillor Skinner. Support the recommendations. Councillor Whibley. Support. Councillor Woodward. Support. Councillor Rag. Support. We, with just one abstention, that one has been approved. Thank you. Now, for the next application, it's in my ward, so I will leave the chair and hand over to Councillor Chamberlain, Vice Chairman. Thank you very much, Chairman. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, the next item, uh, I would like to welcome Mr. Gig and Councillor Cagill, who I believe actually can't be here today. So I believe Wendy's going to read out um, that statement. Um, 
who've both registered to speak on agenda item 12, application number 19 forward slash 1753 forward slash MFUL. Sam's Fun House, St Andrew's Road, Imperial Road, Exmouth. This is on page 127. Before I invite you to speak, we will hear uh, from the development manager, Chris Rose, to present the plans. And Thank you, Chairman. So we've got an application here for demolition of the existing buildings and construction of 34 apartments on the upper floors. And on the lower floors, there's a cafe, stroke bar, a restaurant, a youth centre, and also the associated parking and cycling and bin store. And the applications here because it's contrary to the view of the town council. Uh, you can hopefully see here it's a prom and you'll see from the photos it's a prominent corner position uh, currently uh, in commercial uses, uh, play area and community centre. Um, just for your information, land to the rear, so on this area of the site roughly where my cursor is, there was an application in 2017 that was refused uh, for conversion of uh, offices to flats on the basis that uh, it was in the flood zone and I'll mention more about that in a minute so that and that and sorry and that that application was upheld on appeal because the application failed to go through the sequential test um, so this proposed development so we've got the ground floor so we've got the the parking for the rear to the rear so we've got St Andrews Road here um, and then we've got Manor Gardens to the rear. Um, so as I say, car parking area to the rear, and then we have these uh, cafe and youth center and business uses at ground floor. And then as you go up the building, you get the, uh, the 34 uh, flats above. Um, you'll see from the report that the proposal includes 35% affordable housing. So they're on the second floor, that's 12 units. And you can see from the uh, images at the bottom of this screen that it's quite a contemporary form of design. And you might just be able to see in red the outline of the, uh, the, the, the bulk of the uh, existing building. So you can see they're trying to very much follow the, 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 the bulk of the existing building that's there. Uh, and we, we, we more elevations here, so you can see the, see the, the bulk of design, uh, probably showing better in these images. So, so you can see uh, one elevation and you can see to this road, they're trying to replicate the existing setting back of the building through this design of having the lower floors there. Um, and there's 27 spaces in the, in the courtyard. Uh, so these are the, the photos of the building at the minute. So you can see how this element is is, is a lower height to the, the area behind, hence uh, this, this setback design here to this part of the building. Uh, and then you can see the building in its, in its context in the, in the street and they've got the park off to the side. Uh, again, you can see it in its context. Uh, and a further elevation there. So you'll see from the report in terms of the principle of development, uh, community and commercial, the commercial uses and community uses are being replaced and we're in the built up area boundary for Exmouth. So in principle, the proposed uses are acceptable, but you'll see the report then focuses really on the flooding and sequential test matters. So the site is in flood zone two and three um, and therefore, uh, the presumption is that we shouldn't allow residential development in those flood zones because it adds to the risk of flooding and causes uh, issues of insurance for the owners and also causes emergency services issues when, when places flood. So the, the guidance in the local plan and the MPPF is that we should be directing new residential development to flood zones one and not having them in flood zones two and three. Um, now, your members will be aware from last committee, I think that there's a flood defence scheme that's been put in place for Exmouth, uh, which is which is very good news and will hopefully protect the site. But uh, the Environment Agency take the view that until they amend, unless and until they amend their, mud, their flood maps, even if there is uh, a defence scheme in place, the, the, the area remains uh, at risk of flooding on the basis that those defence works uh, could always fail at some point. Hopefully they never would, but just because that flood defense scheme is in place, it doesn't mean the Environment Agency amend their flood zones. Uh, so regardless of that, the site is in flood zone two and three. And because of that, usually we would require applicants to go through a sequential test. And that sequential test means that we should only build development in flood zones two and three if there is no space elsewhere in the district for it to go on flood zones one. And we normally do a district wide search for that. And um, 
as it shouldn't come as a surprise if we do a district wide search for land we can find land that's in flood zone one where you can build houses so we should be resisting development in flood zone two but in this case uh, and the mppf does allow some flexibility in that where it's considered that there's an overriding need for a certain development that has to go in that location um, in this case, uh, the applicants put forward the case that there is a requirement for one and two bed properties in Exmouth for rent. There's a shortage of those properties. And certainly that was uh, certainly a year ago, that was the position. And there may well be some shortage uh, as of as of today. Some of that shortage has been addressed by the development of Plum Park and Goodmore's Farm, uh, where there's um, a number of uh, smaller units being constructed but that th those two developments certainly won't meet all of that need in Exmouth. Um, and also to address the flood list or, or offset that that harm the applicants proposing 35% uh, affordable housing in this case rather than the 25% that the, the policy requires. Um, so that's partly to add an incentive to development uh, in the flood zone or offset the harm from the development in the flood zone. Um, and the scheme originally came in with 25%, uh, which was eight units, but there was no interest in that from a registered provider. You'll also see from the report that even though they've increased it up to 12 units, we don't have any evidence in front of us that there's a registered provider interested in taking those, th that, those 12 units at the moment. Um, we understand that some of that concern is related to it being in the flood zone, um, but uh, there is a big question mark at the moment about whether there would be a registered provider interested in taking on those units. So given that there's this question mark over whether the, the, the registered provider would take on those 35% and that's being used by the applicant as a means to allow in development in the flood zone, it's considered that that lack of interest from the registered provider sort of undermines their justification for making exception, exception to the sequential test. So you see from the report there that um, officers are of the view that you know we shouldn't policy is not to provide new development uh, housing development in the flood zone and we don't believe the applicants put forward a adequate justification in this case to depart from that position. You will however see from the report that officers are supportive of the amended design that's been submitted that addressed previous concerns. Uh, the new design breaks up the building, the bulk of massing is acceptable, there's no detrimental overlooking uh, and it can be argued that the proposed scheme will enhance the appearance uh, of the site and there's certainly no harm to the conservation area. Uh, parking proposed is adequate, there's no harm to the trees in the park, so in all other uh, regards, other than the flood risk and principal element, the proposal is considered to be uh, acceptable. But as I said, your rec the recommendation is to refuse permission on the basis that it's residential development in the flood zone, there's land available, a lower risk of flooding, and that whilst the smaller units on offer by the applicant and the 35% affordable housing could be used to outweigh that flood risk location, the lack of interest in the proposal from a registered provider undermines uh, whether that affordable housing would ever come forward and therefore undermines the applicant's case for uh, relaxing the sequential test in this instance. So because of that, the application is recommended for refusal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Um, next, I would like to call Mr. Gig to speak. Um, is, is he here? Yes, I am. Lovely. Mr. Gig will be speaking as an agent for the application. And when you're ready, you will have three minutes to speak and make your representation. You will get a 30 second warning towards the end of the three minutes. Thank you. Chairman, thank you for allowing me to talk before you today. We have over the last 12 months worked very closely with the planning team to prepare and submit an application that would be suitable to be supported by the team. We have until recently been advised that we've had full support of the team, however the application before you today is for refusal. The reason for refusal is set out in the officer's report, namely on page 128 under the executive summary and on page 163 on the conclusion. The report bases the decision for refusal on one point. This being the application does not provide enough evidence to show that the Housing Association will be take on the affordable element of the building to justify the reduced sequential test area in Exmouth. During the application, we requested confirmation from the planning team that the sequential test area could be reduced for this application as the site was offering 35% affordable housing for Exmouth and that this was an exceptional circumstance. 
This was agreed by the planning team and therefore we proceeded with the sequential test area being only Exmouth and not the greater district. Exmouth currently has a high need for affordable housing, this being 274 one bedroom and 122 two bedroom dwellings. We as requested by the local authority have contacted housing associations to request if they would be interested in the rented or shared equity dwellings and received responses that they would be interested now that the changes have been made to the layout and affordable numbers increased. However, all requested confirmation of the specific details in the 106 agreement to be before committing. This information is not currently available as the 106 has not been prepared. Therefore, we feel that this demonstrates that 35% affordable could be taken up by a housing association. This we feel overcoming the planning team's concerns and reason for refusal. The site is positioned within the flood zone. However, due to the design and footprint of the new building being less than that of the existing and therefore reducing the overall impact of flooding in Exmouth area, this combined with the new sea defences that have been approved by the local authority, we feel that this further reduces the risk for the town. In conclusion, we believe that the need for one and two bedroom affordable dwellings in Exmouth is enough justification to reduce the sequential test area to obtain housing for Exmouth. The officer's report states that due to recent approvals that have been gained in Exmouth, that 106 new affordable dwellings have been or will be provided over time. This though, still leaving a substantial number needed. Our clients have the funding available and wish to move forward with the proposals once it's approved. Morning, Furthermore, all consultees to date have supported the application, these being as follows, Exmouth Town, Environment Agency, Southwest Water, Devon Highways, Devon County Flood Risk Team. I would ask the committee to support this application and to ensure that affordable dwellings can be provided for Exmouth. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Gig. Um, next to speak is Councillor Kay Gill, which is re representing Exmouth Town Council. Um, I believe that they couldn't make it to the meeting though, so I believe you're going to read it out, Wendy? Yes, that's correct. I've got it in front of me here. Thank you. Okay. Exmouth Town Council had previously objected to this development on a number of grounds. The amended plan put before us last time showed a considerable amount of positive change on overdevelopment and answering issues addressed by the housing officer. Two of the main sticking points for planning officers at present are the sequential test in flood risk assessment and the fact that there is not an identified social housing provider. We considered the overall development now apparently within the envelope of the existing ugly, oh, I can't read that word, Ag oh, <laughs> um, Agglomation, agglomation of the buildings would be a consider considerable visual improvement. It would also provide both a good level of affordable dwellings for people starting out. It is my understanding that the sequential test of flood risk is based on the map, map as currently drawn up by the Environment Agency and does not take into account the flood defence scheme being built for the EA. It would seem a shame to refuse a positive development with social and commercial benefit because of a soon to be outdated flood risk assessment. I also understand that a development in New Street approved in 2018 also with a good level of affordable dwellings had to pass through precisely the same sequential test. The Town Council Planning Committee were comfortable with changing the comment to remove the objection registered on the original scheme. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy, for reading out Councillor Cagill's representation there. Um, next, I would like to invite the ward members for Exmouth Town to speak. Councillor Davey. Thank you. Um, as well as ward member, I should also declare an interest as a town councillor. Um, but I'm a bit conflicted uh, about this one. Um, I, it seems to me strange that this application has got this far in a way, because why on earth wasn't it stopped? If there's never going to be any residential uh, building in that area, why has it been allowed to proceed this far? Um, now, I... Um, I feel it's in a very sustainable location. Okay, it's in a flood zone. 
Um, but as has been pointed out, there are extra flood defences going in at the moment. Um, and um, I, you know, I know the sequential test has to be applied um, and there are arguments about how far that has been um, taken um, in considering. But however, there, there is a lot of multi-occupancy housing in that part of the town. And some of it strikes me as at somewhat of a low standard. So there's plenty of evidence of need of this within the town. And particularly given this is a town centre location, it would be in a very sustainable place. Um, it's uh, going to provide a new youth centre, which uh, I think is a, a massive benefit. Um, none of the residential housing is actually on the ground floor, is it? Um, at the uh, the ground floor is going to have a cafe bar, restaurant and youth centre. So the residential is actually above um, the uh, flood risk zone, I would have thought. Um, th my concern was about uh, whether a registered provider would be prepared to take over the uh, affordable housing. I didn't want uh, to find the developer turning around saying, oh dear me, um, we can't find a, a uh, registered provider and therefore we're going to have to sell the affordable housing at market rent what a pity um, however um, uh, it is in a bit of a catch-22 situation here because no registered provider will take on the um, uh, or express a, a definite interest in this until there's a 106 agreement and there won't be a 106 agreement until permission has been granted um, so uh, I'm reasonably satisfied that a, a registered provider can be found for that um, and that that affordable housing um, will, uh, will take place. So I, I'm, on balance, I feel uh, this it should be allowed. It, as has been pointed out, it's an ugly, I think that word, Wendy, was agglomeration, which <laughs> is a, a lovely word. Um, it, it is a pretty ugly collection of buildings. Um, and despite the fact that, like Councillor Wibley, I've also played quite a few gigs in the bank um, and even, I think, uh, the banqueting suite, um, uh, I'd be very happy to see them go, so long as a plaque is put up. Thank you very much, Councillor Davey. Next we have Councillor Wibley. Is that a plaque uh, for your musical services to the building, Councillor <laughs> Davey, I'm sure? All um, of them. All of them, yeah. As long as I get one too, I don't mind. Um, I too am really quite torn on this because basically echoing the views of Councillor Davey, um, in theory, the amount of affordable housing is, is great. It's, you know, above the, the amount that it needs to be. And I think as the, the point which Councillor Davey made about um, how has he got this far, it's... <clears throat> It's, it's, it's quite pertinent and it's a question that I would ask because if you're not going to build, the buildings need to go because they are, they don't look great, they don't work together, it's not a pleasant um, sort of view. Um, and if not this development, then what? In future, people are going to apply to build things there um, and it's, what's going to go there if, if this doesn't? Um, I initially, I, you know, I had concerns about the height of it and the design of it um, because I personally, I think it could fit in more with the uh, with the local surround with the surrounding buildings. Um, but again, uh, what what's going to go there if this doesn't? Um, because to reject now would um, put off a lot of people in future from even trying. Um, and then the buildings that, that are there at the moment will remain. So I remain torn and welcome the debate from other members. Thank you very much, Councillor Wibley. Next we have Councillor Rag. Thank you. <coughs> well, I'm, I'm in a similar predicament. Um, I note the local lead flood risk authority, the manager there has no in principle objections from a surface water drainage perspective. Um, at the junction of Imperial Road and St Andrews Road, um, I don't know if you've got an image of that, Chris, um, 
a photo of it. Yeah. Um, over there where the blue lettering, MOT, that area does flood. Now, it's not fluvial flooding, so the tidal defence scheme um, wouldn't make any difference to that. It is surfa surface water flooding, not to any great depth but the risk is there. And with climate change, that will probably increase. Um, also on the other side of the road, um, you'll see the windows, the little squared windows. Um, yeah, that's the former Siemens mission and that's been acquired. It was already um, in multiple occupancy, more or less little flatlets. And that's been acquired by East Devon District Council. I agree that the appearance of the old building, um, Sam's Fun House, is, is a letdown uh, to the town, so close to the town centre. Um, so I'm, I too am conflicted on this one. Um, if the flood risk manager is not concerned, would that weaken our position if we, if, if we refuse and if it went to appeal, the application went to appeal. Do you, shall, I, shall I jump in and yeah. answer that? Um, yes, yeah, please. so there's, there's sort of three things going on here. The, the lead authority are really looking at surface water drainage. Yeah. And you're right that there's issues in the area, but the, de the developer can come up with a scheme within the site to deal with that. So, um, then you've got the Environment Agency that are providing comments on how to make the building flood resilient in mm. uh, a flood uh, event. And then it's down to us as the local authority to carry out that sequential test. So it's for us yeah. to determine whether we feel that there's land elsewhere in the district that this development should go to, or as you are debating, whether you feel that there are reasons to depart from that in this instance. So it's that latter one that's for us, but I don't think uh, the comments of the lead authority or the environment agency make any difference in terms of uh, an appeal. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I'm still not sure which way to go with this. Um, I don't know what that building would become otherwise. And although there's no, um, social housing provider going to come forward that, that is a risk that the applicant will take um so I, i'm still i'm still not sure i don't like to go against officers recommendations um so i might just well abstain on this one um that's not taking the coward's way out but i really I'm 50-50 on it. In fact, I'm leaning towards uh, approval of um, the application. Thank you, Councillor Rag. Uh, next, I would like to invite the committee members to speak by raising their blue hands. Currently on the list, I have um, four speakers. Um, so first of all, I'd like to invite Councillor Mike Howe to speak. Thank you very much, um, committee. This, this is quite easy, actually, but it is going to tax our planning officer and our legal because I can't hear. Councillor Mike Howe, we seem to have lost can't, you can't You're intermittently coming in and out. Do you want to, shall I move on to the next one and come back to you? I think we'll, we'll come back to Councillor Howe in a minute. So next on the list, I have Councillor Skinner. Thank you, um, um, Madam Vice Chairman. Um, I actually, it's one of these applications, when I read it through, I mean, I know the area uh, very well, uh, as do other, other members as well. When I read it through, I was thinking, oh, goodness gracious, this is rather um, uh, large and, and uh, the flooding, and there seems to be lots of things going against it. The more I read it again, and I went through the papers again and looked at it, and I, I um, um, went down and had a look at the site and all the rest of it. Um, I'm actually of a view that in the fact, on the basis that 
there is no not going to be any residential on the ground floor. I think I'm correct in that. Please correct me, uh, Mr. Rose, if I'm wrong. No, that's correct. Um, that any flood issue then regarding homes is going to be up on the, do you call it the first floor, second floor, whatever you want to call it, the first floor up, not the ground floor. On the basis that there's not a registered provider, I find that would be difficult. I think once it got going and provided the numbers stacked out, I think that would come through. You would have to say to yourself in a town like Exmouth, in the very centre of the town, did we not have an application last week? We were talking about somewhere in, in Axminster and getting more people into the town and keeping the town vibrant. And I'm talking right in the town centre, particularly on an affordable homes basis with a large number of affordable homes and on a percentage terms within this site, uh, right in the town centre, which makes it really convenient. That the, the use of a car is, is negated against the fact that it's so close and it's a town centre. I believe we should be uh, going upwards a little bit with our towns to get, get the vibrancy of keeping the towns going and keeping people in them and keeping them alive and keeping them going. Um, and I understand that with the other, um, I absolutely understand from an officer's point of view that we've got Plum Park, we've got Good Moors and that coming online with affordable housing schemes. I take that on board. But on balance, for me, in having a scheme that comes here that looks like it's going to be really workable, it's going to provide some other um, uh, economic benefits as well. On balance, it was a toughie, but the more you read it, the more you keep leaning towards an approval. So I think on that basis, if nobody else is going to, I'm prepared to recommend uh, an approval for this application, which goes against the officer's recommendations. Although I do feel that the officers are caught between a balance between our policy and certainly within the floodplain and the like, <coughs> and that description, um, and actually uh, creating a place <coughs> whereby people on a, with an affordable housing balance can actually uh, uh, um, live. So for me, I'm going to support this application. I will recommend a put forward a proposed recommendation of approval, and I would hope to look for Madam Chairman, uh, Vice Chairman, uh, a seconder for that motion. Thank you. Thank you very I, much, Councillor Skinner. I believe that is a proposal from Councillor Skinner. So do we have a seconder for that? Yes, Jeff Pook. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Councillor Pook. Um, do we want to go to the next people? I wonder if Councillor Howe is back now. No, I would like to try again. Um, Yay! Hello. <laughs> there you are. We'll try Down again. To you. <laughs> um, I actually disagree with the recommendation to approve, and that is quite simple. We have a system that has to be followed. We have to set this standard. And we've done it before and actually appeals have backed us up with this that is let us be very careful the design is fine the sustainability is fine the building is fine the, everything about this planning application is absolutely spot on and we should be approving it in all those cases the issue is the affordable element and the lack of interest that is confirmed um, for the affordable apartments so my view on this is slightly different and we've got through this before we should make a decision to approve subject to the section 106 and the affordable housing being agreed without those agreements <coughs> you not progress because you cannot limit the sanctioning of um where the search zone is where the search zone is um without the deemed need for the affordable housing and the actual proven deliverability of the affordable housing. Otherwise, we are building in floodplains all over the place. Yes, we have a great flood prevention um, scheme being built in Exmouth. Absolutely fantastic. And let's hope it stays protecting, but it will not lower the flood risk in this area purely because they are done on the possibility of breaking of any flood barrier, etc. So the flood zone inside is still at risk, a lot less risk, but it will stay at risk. And as such, we need to maintain um, our way of doing things. In particular, the officers are quite right in summing this up. 
everything else is fine. And the, the agent, I know he's still listening, thankfully, has done everything perfectly right. But we need to get over this last hurdle. And I want off our officers, and I'm looking at Shirley in particular, to find a legal way we can get, if these registered providers need a Section 106, to provide the Section 106, knowing we're going to grant permission so that everything can be signed up, agreed, and go ahead. We've done it before. We've done it with the other apartment block in Exmouth. We just need to get the all the I's dotted and the T's crossed on this. And as such, I cannot support it without that condition. And that condition needs to be there. So I'm looking at Shirley and also Chris um, to make sure we can get that if this recommendation to approve without that goes ahead. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Councillor Howe. Chris, Shirley, did you want to come back in at all? If, if I may, in relation to the process for the Section 106, we would normally um, complete a Section 106 or have a, a Section 106 completed before any planning permission is granted. That, that would set out the requirements for the level and tenure of affordable housing required on the site but that wouldn't automatically require an RP to be in place before that section 106 was completed and before the planning permission was issued. That's all I can advise on that issue. I don't know if Chris has anything he can add. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm wondering if the, the question from Councillor Howe really is whether, and as it's raised by the applicant, that there's been no interest from the registered provider, and that's been uh, confirmed by the housing officer because there isn't a section draft section 106 in place. I, I suppose the issue is whether the item, whether we should get that draft section 106 in place so that the RPs have sight of it, uh, and then we can confirm whether they have any interest uh, in the in the proposal. And that's um, the problem. It might solve the problem. Uh, my con my concern slightly has been that we had a similar application like this in New Street, where we where, where a committee granted it, understandably, because again it was providing one bed units, and it was providing affordable housing. We completed the Section 106 agreement. It's gone out to the public, and there's no interest on it from the RP. So now we're in a position where we've got a consent that can't be implemented. So. Yes, I suppose it is within the gift of members to defer the item to get the legal agreement drafted to see once that is drafted whether there's any interest from a registered provider. That solves the problem completely because without the affordable element, this is not a, a sensible scheme with the uh, conditions we've got to put. Thank you very much, Shirley and Chris and Mike. Uh, next on my list, I have Councillor Pook to speak. Uh, thank you. I think um, Chris might have addressed one of those questions just now because basically I, I got three points. There's, you know, whatever we talk about numbers of affordable housing and whether demand, I think you know, there's always going to be a demand in the Southwest in any of the towns, any of the villages, as we'll see in a, another application coming up soon. There's always demand for those houses um, and it will be um, amplified, I think, you know, following COVID. So we know that the, the houses um, at the right price, affordable use will be um, uh, will be taken up. And I fully agree that the, um, the, the they should be conditioned or this applicate this this um, uh, application should be conditioned on um, uh, an S106. And I can't understand why we haven't got it in future. Uh, um, before before us now, because looking at um, the the applications I've been involved in, we've got a we've got a 106 agreement sorted out um, before it comes before it actually comes forward, so people know the builder knows what he's got to do, and the the potential buyers know what the what's going to be on the market in the future. So um, when I said I'd support it, I'd support it, but I'd certainly condition it with the S106 in there determining that the 35% of affordable housing must be delivered. Um, if it turns out that there's no one coming forward, it might be that they, they have to look at the viability because if the um, if the developer is asking too much from the um, RPs for those affordable units, there might be some adjustment there, but that would be a negotiation later, but certainly we should have it all laid down in the S106 and on as long as that's conditioned and 
you know, very happy to support it. Other points uh, relating to it, you know, it's obviously a site which is causing concern in Exmouth. I've driven past it a few times and you, you look at you look at it, you say it's ripe for development, it needs to be improved. And as the other um, local councillors have said, yes, they accept it needs to be done. Then it comes down to the flood situation. Well, I think the flood flooding issues can be mitigated. We aren't talking about residential properties on the ground floor, we're talking about commercial and there's, there's practical mitigation methods within the building, within the design they can take um, on top of all the, the, the mitigation which is coming from, our, from the EA and um, from, the, from other authorities. So providing we have a, an S, it's all conditioned on an S106, um, um, dictating that we'll have 35, 35% affordable, I'm happy to support it. Thank you very much, Councillor Pook. Next on the list, I have Councillor Desara. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I think this is this has been a very difficult one as well. Um, I, I note what the Town Council said, that um, this would provide visual improvement, affordable dwellings and social and commercial benefits. And I think that I would support it. But again, as, as the previous councillors said, the Section 106 is the key and um, I'm not sure whether is there a, the possibility we should propose a deferral subject to getting the 106 agreement in place, um, as we've done on previous um, a previous application uh, last last session when we were not sure of our facts. Um, so I would put, I would want to approve it, but I would also put forward a, a suggestion that we we defer it to another meeting in the next month or so uh, to get this 106 agreement ironed out. If if that's a possibility, I'm not sure. And I asked Mr. Rose and Shirley whether that is possible because clearly that's the big problem, um, other than obviously the building on the front plane but clearly you know that the, the next step is the 106 so uh thank you very much members and i i, I put that out to, to your suggestion thank you very much councillor desara next on the list i have uh, councillor gazard thank you thank you chair yeah i i would um i, I was contemplating um asking whether it would be possible for a deferral um, because I do really think that this S106 needs to be sorted out first. Um, and also, um, you know, the flood initiative is not going to go away. As, as Councillor Raggett stated, the problems that happened at St Andrews Road, Imperial Road, and the flood system is only going to be as good as if it does work um, in previous um, floods that we've had in Exmouth recently. Um, the water has come up right up as far as the town hall, including uh, pine trees that have come over the wall. So there is the flood issue to take into account as well. And I, I am concerned, and, and I stand to be corrected if I'm wrong, but we will be losing a well-used uh, nursery that's in Sam's Fun House. Um, and I can't see anywhere in the report that there's going to be a replacement in the um, in, in the, the new scheme, um, but I, I would support a deferral in, in order to get this S106 sorted out and to get somebody to take on the responsibility of the affordable housing. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Gazard. Next on the list, I have Councillor McLaughlin. Oh, I'm really sorry. I didn't know I had my hand up. Sorry, Chair. <laughs> no worries at all. Uh, next on the list, then, I have Councillor Skinner. I'd, I'd like to come back and support, actually, what Councillor Howe suggested and take on board his experience. And uh, I think he made a very, very sensible suggestion. And that is with the recommendation uh, that I um, uh, support the application that actually that we put within that uh, what Councillor uh, Mike Howe, Councillor Howe was suggesting in having this S106 agreement. The last thing uh, by condition, um, and I want to hold to that rather than having a deferment. And the reason is this, if the applicants understand in one hand, they've got almost half the application over the line, in fact, nearly the whole application over the line, but they have to come to this 106 agreement agreement, then it gives them the impetus to go on and do that. If you do a, referral, a deferral, 
at this moment in time, after all the work that they put into place, um, sometimes that doesn't always go in the favour as, as to uh, which way we may feel as, as a committee. I'm happy with the application as it is. I'd be happier in the suggestions that Councillor Howe made to make sure we nail it down properly to what they are saying it is going to be and that it is what it says it's going to be and that there's no slippage between then and the application being approved and that's then becomes a subject too. And I prefer that approach than I do a deferral of this application. Thank you. Oh, Madam Chair, I'll just, if I say, I just want to add that into the recommendation that I want to put forward within my proposal to approve with the Council House suggestion of the conditions added to it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Skinner. Um, so that's a, an amendment to original proposal. Sorry, I couldn't keep pressing this old button. I turned it off. Yeah, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it, it's an amendment to ensure what Councillor Howe suggested. I'm sure he's got the, the words. I can't, didn't write it down at the time, but uh, and I'm sure Mr Rose may have it, but to ensure we have the 106 agreement uh, that becomes a condition with this application. Yes. Thank you. That's lovely. Thank you, Councillor Skinner. We have Councillor Howe to speak next. Um... Thank you very much. Um, I think the words we need to use are slightly different, Councillor Skinner, in that we are making the decision to approve subject to the register provider being, you know, the section 106 being agreed and the register provider being committed. So that I think is the easy way around this. We've made the decision that the, yep. the uh, applicant has to then complete and we do. Yep. I do have a slightly secondary question, and it's for the whole committee to take in, in mind. Um, having heard Mr Rose say we have an application for one-bedroom flats, which are badly needed in Exmouth, um, that is granted but can't be delivered because we can't find a registered provider. We have council housing stock. We are the registered <laughs> provider ourselves. And I would like our own housing company stroke um, council stock officer um, and possibly our cabinet uh, member for housing to come along and tell us why we cannot take these up ourselves when they are so desperately needed in Exmouth. Mm. We need to explore every avenue to get these developments happening, Absolutely. filled and done. And Absolutely. I find it really hard. And I know the funding is different, but that is not my expertise. Why we need someone to come along and tell us why we cannot step in as the last resort yes. registered provider to deliver these. So Ab can I make that as a recommendation to go from this committee to the relevant people, please, as well? I agree with that, Mike. Yep. Really good. Really good. Okay. okay. Thank you, Councillor Howe. So we have a recommendation from Councillor Howe as well. Do we have a seconder for that recommendation? Yes, I second that. Okay, Councillor so McLaughlin. Have... Lovely. Thank you very much, Councillor McLaughlin. Did, did you I also can... wish to speak or? Uh, no, thank you. Everything's been said. Thank you so much. Thank you. As a point of clarity, Vice Chairman, um, I'd made a recommendation and then I'd put forward the proposal of adding in what Councillor Howe suggested, which he put into the words. Yeah. And then adding on to what Councillor Hay wanted to suggest, which I had agreed with. So just for clarity, that recommendation I put forward is supported. I was assuming that Councillor Hay then, who came behind me, was going to second that of myself as the proposal and him as the seconder. So I don't see why you needed to go out and do just a point why you need to go out and have a proposal in a second when you already had them in place excuse me chair can i just pop up here indeed councillor councillor pook was the seconder for yes. the approval by councillor skinner and yeah. therefore if councillor skinner has made an amendment it is for councillor pook to agree that amendment to well their said. proposal their motion yeah um incorporating councillor howe's wording or, yes well Although for the attendance of um, a member of the housing um, 
company or the uh, working group to attend the committee. I think that is a completely separate matter yes, it is. than yes. the um, recommendation you have before you now. Yes, it is. Yeah. So okay, Councillor Pook. Councillor Pook here, and yes, I support the, the amendment to the recommend to the um, proposal um, uh, as as stated. Lovely. Thank you, Councillor Pook. My apologies, Councillor Skinner. Um, so if we can go to Shirley, we, can you sum up what the proposal is, please? Chair, through you. Um, I think we still need just to clarify the justification for going against officer recommendation and to set out what it is in the Section 106, whether it is only the affordable housing obligations that the planners would be looking to have within the section 106. I don't know whether there's a requirement for management company or any other um, obligations that would flow from an approval. If Chris could perhaps assist in that, I think it would be easier for members. Yeah, Chris has his hand up, so we'll go straight to you. Uh, no, sorry, we've got... Um... Chris, you can come in now, and then we've got Councillor Howe <coughs> wanting to speak. Yeah, I think the uh, off the top of my head, the legal agreement would need to cover the affordable housing and the relevant contribution towards habitat regulations. But it'd only be those two issues uh, that I can that I can think it would need to cover. Lovely, thank you, um, Chris. Next, we have Councillor Howe. Well, it's just to 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 allow Wendy, uh, not Wendy, um, legal to understand, um, we are not going against officers. We are clarifying that we believe the, um, uh, God, the search um, means we can limit the search area down to Exmouth, provided the affordable housing is provided and guaranteed to be provided. So it is exactly as the officers have said, the one reason for refusal is the flood and the fact that we cannot limit the search because the affordable housing is not guaranteed. We are seeking to guarantee that and as such, allow the development in all other aspects to go ahead. Thank you, Councillor Howe. Back is to Shirley. Is that sufficient for Chris Rose to formulate a, a reason for approval? Yes, I'm happy that a combination of uh, what the proposer and seconder and Councillor Howe have said is, is, is adequate for me. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Therefore, <laughs> let, me, let me try and summarise then. But, um, members, you have a proposal, a motion to grant permission um, subject to conditions and subject to a section 106 agreement if the conditions could be delegated to officers and ward members and if the section 106 heads of terms should include affordable housing and habitat regulations um, contribution if uh, you could when you please confirm uh, when your name is called that you support the grant you're against the grant or you abstain from the vote thank you Thank you very much, Shirley. I'm going to go over to Wendy to call. Thank you. Councillor Bloxham. Support. Councillor Brown. Yes, support subject to the 106 agreement. Councillor Chamberlain. Support. Councillor Davey. Support with the conditions. Councillor Desarum. Support with all the conditions, including the 106. Councillor Gazard. Support with all the conditions. Councillor Howe. Support. Councillor Key. Support. Councillor McLaughlin. Support. Councillor Pook. Support. Councillor Pratt. Support. Councillor Skinner. Support to Grant. Councillor Whibley. Support. Councillor Woodward. Support. Councillor Rag. Support. Thank you, Vice Chairman. I confirm that the motion is carried. Lovely. Thank you very much.
Um, I'd just like to thank uh, Mr Gig and Wendy for reading out Councillor Kerry Gill's um, representation. Um, and just to be advised that Mr Gig will now be removed for the waiting room um, to end their call. Um, I'd now like to hand you back to our chairman, Chairman Councillor Wright. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Excellent job, Sarah. Um, now, we've been asked if, if we could have a comfort break. So what should we say, uh, 10 minutes, is that enough? Or would you like 15? Say 15 then, 15 minutes, so back at quarter to one. Lovely, thank you. Thank you.